Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks. I'm Keith and today I'm going to show you how to do a very traditional British dish, shepherd's pie. So before we start, a quick shout out to my lovely new patrons on Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> Joshua Dahan, Paul Carey, Ada Piccolo, Stacey Happenick, Jean Rouleau, Rachel Simmons and Robert Hartley. Thanks guys, much appreciated. Now, shepherd's pie, made from shepherds, right? Wrong. Uh, in fact, the, the, this is a very, fairly flexible recipe. Everybody's got their own idea of what it should be. But um, the terminology, there's shepherd's pie and there's cottage pie and they are different in that uh, the shepherd's pie contains lamb as in shepherd sheep lamb and the cottage pie contains beef as in cow beef cottage i don't know <laughs> anyway it's been around for a couple of hundred years and there's a reason for that it's because it's marvelous it's lovely and warming and very easy to do so let's do it Right, ingredients for the meaty sauce bit. I've got 500 grams of minced lamb, half a litre of chicken stock, one medium onion, a stick of celery, a couple of carrots, and a sprig of rosemary. Possibly won't use all of that. <laughs> and a pinch of salt and a pinch of ground black pepper to taste. Also, I've got Henderson's relish, because I'm in Yorkshire. Um, the rest of the world, you can use Worcester sauce. Okay, let's get going. First thing to do is peel and chop the onion, as always. Now I'll tell you what, let's sharpen that knife. Just like a chef. <laughs> okay, and I usually chop it into bits like this. Well, I chop it into slices first and then into small, smaller squares. I know some other people have their own crazy techniques, but that's mine. So there's the onion done. Now you want to top and tail your carrots and peel them. Or, if they're not too much of a mess, you can just run them under a cold tap and rub them with a clean scourer. That works pretty well. But these are a little bit ropey, so I'm peeling them. And then you want to dice them. Right, I've got some oil in the pan on medium heat and I'm gonna fry off the onions a little bit. Just let those soften a bit before we add the meat. And then chop the celery, quite, quite small. Let's pop the lamb in. And you want to, and you want to break it up and try and get it browned all over. Now I've seen some recipes where people would add garlic at this point. Uh, I don't think that's traditional, uh, so I'm not doing it. I mean, I might have had a deprived childhood. I didn't know what garlic was till I left home, but there you go. <laughs> right, so the lamb's browned and it's starting to release quite a bit of liquid. So let's chuck the, the carrots in and the celery those a good stir, get them covered in those juices. Nom nom, get in. And then add the stock. Now also your, your Ponzi chefs will add red wine, uh, which I'm sure is lovely. In fact, I know it is, but again, that ain't traditional. Um, so this is what I'm doing. I'll just let those simmer for a bit and then we'll sort out the, the seasoning and we'll add the the other ingredient that I forgot to tell you about, which is uh, some frozen peas. Right, that's uh, bubbly bubbly, and here's me frozen peas. And you're going to think, and I bet you're thinking, well, they didn't have frozen peas in the olden days, did they? They did in Yorkshire. <laughs> of course, it's gold. I jest. Anyway, they can go in for a bit. And I've chopped up some of the rosemary. Uh, like maybe a quarter of that. If you were using beef, uh, I would recommend parsley instead of rosemary because they go better together. But rosemary goes with lamb like fish goes with chips. So, tasty, tasty time. Yep. 
that needs some salt and some pepper and the not what's the sauce just let those infuse for a minute and then we'll taste them again <laughs> and for the benefit of that lady in California who was disgusted at me double dipping in a recipe once I wiped the spoon happy you crazy person well all I got there was a mouthful of rosemary <laughs> Okay, that's good. So I'm just gonna turn the heat down and let that simmer and reduce for about half an hour. Meanwhile, I'll get on with the spuds. Right, I've got a bunch of spuds and you want about the same volume of potatoes as you have of meat sauce. And I'm just gonna peel these because um, I don't like potato skin in mashed potato really. I know some people do, but it doesn't do it for me. And then just chop them into small chunks about that size so I've got a pan of water coming to the boil salted water coming to the boil behind me so when that's boiling I'll chuck these in and cook them for about 20 minutes till they're really soft okay so this is um, pretty much done well it is done uh, and let's have a final taste That's good, I like that. So this is the oven dish that I'm gonna finish it in. So I'll just chuck that in there. And I want this to get quite cool and firm before I put the potato topping on it and bake it. Right, the spuds are cooked. So I've drained them, I'm gonna add some milk and a nerb of butter. Now, other people will add maybe cream, maybe egg yolks and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm keeping it simple because I am. <laughs> and, uh, and I just mash them. You will want a pinch of salt in there probably. Well, definitely. Just mash those till they're nice and smooth. Right, there's my spuds all lovely and creamy and smooth. And we just need to place a thin layer on top of the meat. Try to get it the same thickness and right up to the edge of the dish so the sauce won't leak out. Easier said than done that, but you know, I have to tell you these things. <laughs> okay, there it is. And uh, well, I actually squeezed out a bit of the juice, but um, never mind. So I'll just rough it up all over a bit. Rough it all over a bit. That's not, is that even English? And you want to get your oven preheating to 180 degrees Celsius if it's a fan oven or 200 if it isn't. And finally, cheese, say cheese, thin layer of cheese all over it. This is just grated cheddar. Um, you could use Parmigiano, like they used to in Yorkshire <laughs> in the olden days, or not. And that will melt into a nice, crispy, crunchy thing of wonderfulness. Okay, so that goes in the oven for, well, about 20, 25 minutes until it's golden brown and crispy. And here it is, a wonderful shepherd's pie. Contains no shepherds and isn't really a pie but I'm sure it'll be delicious. So um, that's been out of the oven for about five minutes, so it stopped buzz bubbling and sizzling, and now it's um, safe to eat. Knife, just to cut through the cheese on the top. Otherwise we'll drag the whole lot off in a slab. Okay, oops. That is seriously lovely. And that's that, I hope you enjoyed it. So now the usual malarkey, shares, likes, comments, uh, stuff like that. And don't forget, you can now support me on Patreon or make a donation on my website. That would be lovely, thank you very much. 
Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.